guys, I have crippling depression, you know. So, yesterday, right, uh, I had a meltdown, and I was over live, yada yada yada, and as I was yelling at air, because I don't know, <laughs> like, the whole thing about being spiritual, it says, like, people are always around you, but, like, I can't physically see it, so I was yelling at air. And I cried myself to sleep because I was so tired of living. And so, right, here I am with a scar on my head from trying to shave my eyebrows and shaving my unibrow. That's barely noticeable, but I was trying to shave it. Shaved it too hard, now it's a scar. I'm in my do-rag with a bump on my cheek because i'm breaking out i'm just over it it's been a rough week and i go to bed super early i wake up at 12 a.m right i stay up all the way to eight and when i go on twitter i saw um I don't want to say her name wrong and I really don't like I don't want her to take any offense to me saying her name wrong and like for the remainder of the video I'm gonna say her nickname Olu Oluwatoyan Salau or Salu was a 19 year old right and for the re remainder of the video I'm gonna say Toyin was a 19 year old activist and she was sexually assaulted at well it wasn't really at the protest what ended up happening was because i made this video twice mainly because the other one was super long and like i just kept rambling but joining at the end of the day like at a protest right she was looking for a way back to the church that she was seeking refuge at right because it was the most stable place that she could stay at, at the moment during the protest anyway and so as she was seeking refuge because mind you i read the tweets already but i guess i could reread them but like basically as she was like trying to find a way back this man offered her a ride and she didn't have her cell phone because her cell phone was at the church her clothes were at the church so she took the ride from the man giving him the benefit of the doubt thinking that this was divine intervention right and as she got to the man's house because he took her to his house um he offered her a shower as he offered her a shower he then like you know started peeing in front of her and he did it in a very you know sick twisted perverted way so he did it with the door open because he wanted her to see it this man has a roommate um i don't know the man's age i don't think she knows the man's age but as he did that right she felt obviously very unfucking comfortable and previously she was sexually assaulted by this other man and um his name was ivan and he is a 32 year old guyanan man who currently schools at famu and he lives at 211 jakes and patterson right and he and the guy who sexually assaulted her before this whole incident um basically he tried to make her give oral and then he basically became a stalker and so as she explained that to that man that man honestly did not give a fuck and he took advantage of her he took advantage of a 19 year old girl that he picked up and you know why because black men, black cis men, who are misogynistic, honestly couldn't give a fuck about black women. Y'all don't give a fuck about black women. Y'all don't give a fuck about cis, tr cis trans women. Y'all don't give a fuck about cis trans people in general. Y'all don't give a fuck about anybody that isn't a fucking man. Y'all don't. Y'all don't. And that's why we're never gonna have fucking unity that's why racism is never gonna be in like it's never gonna be demolished or abolished it's never gonna end 
because cis black men who are extremely misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic, colorist, fatphobic, etc. The list goes on. Ableist, xenophobic. There is a want to be on the top. The Black Lives Matter movement is very focused on cis black men lives. And if you're not a cis black man, you barely get any coverage. You barely get any tweets. The only reason why Toyin's name is trending is because of black women and black men who actually care. Because, let me say this, black men do care, right? But it's not all, and it's not a general consensus. Black men, some black men do care, and they are saying her name. Black women who have been putting their lives on the line are saying her name. Black trans people are saying her name. Black LGBT people in general are saying her name. But without us, because we're easily ignored, we're the easily ignored demographic, who would really say her name? But anyways, right? So, after she takes the shower, she lays on his couch and this perv fucking asshole had the audacity to offer her a fucking massage knowing damn well that he just wanted to have sex with her without the consent without the consent he just wanted to have sex with her and she laid there on her tummy on her belly as a 19 year old girl i don't think you understand i'm 19 i'm 19 i'm 19 i look like a child i act like a child i do childish things i'm in college i just finished my freshman year of college like i just graduated high school a year ago i just became legal a year ago and for whatever reason black men take it upon themselves to still sexually harass children she is 19 we're teenagers we're teenagers nothing about us should turn you on at all you are sexually deprived for whatever fucking reason boo but that is not a black woman's problem black men you gotta fix that and it's not all black men it's just the black men predators and the black men who cape for these predators in the first place but anyways right so he did whatever deed that he wanted to do to her and she was trying her hardest not to have ptsd or not to experience ptsd and to not have an anxiety attack so in a brief moment after he leaves her alone she grabs the quickest things possible she grabs his clothes and then she walks out the door trying to escape and we don't know what else happened to her and we know technically she was murdered we know technically she died but we don't know if he killed her we don't know if like some other person killed her but she didn't deserve to die like that and many black women don't deserve to die like that. The reason why, on my Instagram page anyways, and on my Twitter, I mainly talk about the black women or the black LGBT people, is because we're often silenced. But along with that silence, a lot of things, like a lot of things black men just let slide or like black men let a lot of shit slide basically so i go hard for those groups because we're often silenced and Toyin put her 19 years of life on the line protesting for the unity and the respect of black people she put her life on the line to make a change for the African Americans in America. Possibly the world, but in America. And it is so sad that 
many black women put our lives on the line to protest just for us to be the victims of sexual assault by a black man and it's the weirdest thing because if you don't protest and you publicly say that you will not protest black men will shame you if you do protest then you have the good civil black men but then you also have the predators who are protesting because monsters wear masks monsters wear masks sociopaths wear masks psychopaths wear masks you will never know who a person is because they have a mask and these black sexual assaulters will never understand the fear that black women have to be a sexual assault victim you never want to be sexually assaulted again because it takes years to finally deal with it deal with the trauma understand that the trauma happened to you and try to just move on because repressing the memory doesn't really get you anywhere because eventually you have to address it and so you know thinking about it because my sexual assaulter was a was a girl it was a black girl but like I protest for all black women not knowing if she's ever there I, I, I honestly don't and I think the thing is about being a black teenager and being a black girl when you're really passionate about something you honestly kind of forget the sexual assault like you really do because it's not always there you don't always think about it but it is a fear there is a fear about being sexually assaulted again but like when you're like when i protest for black lives mind you never went to a protest never went to a protest i am sick weak immune system i used to get sick like once a month and i just got no surgery like two months ago i'm not i'm not trying we're in the middle of a pandemic this is all very chaotic energy very chaotic energy and basically this is the rat year in addition to it being the rat year like the planets are all in a weird alignment all of this bullshit is happening the planets are in are in alignments that basically call for a revolution and drastic change and so all of this isn't surprising to me because i like astrology and i'm spiritual but all in all the thing about Toyin's murder is that I believe we're supposed to analyze how the Black Lives Matter movement wasn't really working for black women. We don't really talk about Breonna Taylor that much. We talk about her every day on Twitter. People mention her name last as if she's the only black woman who's been murdered. But she's not. Excuse me. She's not. We're often neglected. Like, we're often neglected. There was a pregnant woman who was hung recently, within the last week, during all of these protests. You had Tony McDade. You have Rihanna Taylor. There's a long list. There's a long list. Because I looked it up. There's a long list of black women who have been murdered by the police and we would never get this type of circus we would never we would never um george floyd had like three funerals where's brianna taylor's three funerals where's tony mcdane's dates three funerals it's never gonna happen because black men i don't think like we honestly need a conversation about black sexual assaulters or just sexual assault in general and how we often victim blame and victim shame because all of that can lead to a suicide all of that can lead to deteriorating crippling depression and like we deserve way better we do men 
are black women tired we carry a shit ton of ass shit the world on our back we carry birthing birthing periods taking care of the black community trying to keep it from being in shambles we put our lives on the line every day the amount of single black mothers is ridiculous like yo and then on top of that whenever you piss a guy off and you're a black woman he comes for you like he come for your race he come from your weight your height your body type your hair type your features he come for all of that and it's like damn we can never catch a break when are we gonna catch a break when are when are we gonna actually have unity you know real unity unity that allows us to not have that bullshit european created colonization placed as hierarchy when when because oftentimes we like if you go on the internet and like you can find videos well obviously you're on the internet now but you can find videos of like people especially native american people talking about how they used to have three genders and they allowed the three genders to coexist they weren't as misogynistic at all the women knew their role the men knew their role and the third gender also played a role in society without having an annoying hierarchy but for some reason, colonization just shook the table. It shook the table. And, girl, we got to demolish that now. Because I know Gen Z is tired. I know Gen Z is tired. Toyin was a Gen Zer. A Gen Zer. Do you understand? With the crust in my eye, a Gen Zer babies we're babies fighting the fight because for some odd reason the white boomers did not want us to ever feel safe in this country they did not want us to ever feel a sense of power they did not want us to feel a sense of safety they wanted us to know that they were always at the top and that whenever we're in a room we're possibly a threat to them and so because we're a threat they want to threaten us we're the biggest threat for whatever reason we're the biggest threat you're the biggest threat you're the biggest threat you're the biggest threat because you made it okay for people to get away with sexual assault and to shame the victim like black women were ripped and stripped of their identity during enslavement like when are we ever gonna catch a break and when are black men actually gonna step the fuck up and like do something about the black sexual assaulters in the community because for one y'all over sexualize us as children i don't know what is sexy about a six-year-old i don't know what's sexy about a five-year-old i don't know what's sexy about an 18 month old i don't know what's sexy about a 19 year old where babies we just came out the womb 19 years ago. Toyin just came out the womb outside of her mother's womb 19 years ago. And you're telling me that you want to get your rocks off to that? Sir, there's a mental problem. And because the black community often neglects mental health, we need to fix that. Y'all need to lock these sexual predators up. I am tired. Black women are tired. We be like black women be putting their lives on the line, on the front lines, on the front lines for black people. Especially black men because they see they intertwine black the murder of black men into their family and they take it personally. We take it personally. It's a personal hit to us. So 
when black women see their sons, husbands, boyfriends, uncles, fathers, grandfathers, etc. And these men who are being murdered, they will put their lives on the line. Black men will not do the same. They will not be like, oh, that's my sister. That's my cousin. That's the, the. no, it's very rare. And I feel like it's very rare because they don't even say that. They just be like, I'm a protest for this black woman because it shouldn't happen. And black men who do say that, that's my, I see that as my sister. I see that as my aunt. Where are y'all at right now? Are y'all like, you know, very loud, very vocal? Or maybe that's just the Chrissy and like Paris Milan propaganda that I watch. But yeah, I'm tired. Mind you, after having my whole breakdown yesterday, one to die, like I stayed up all night. And every time that I went to Twitter, her name and like another trending um, hashtag or another trending topic related to twin would be trending. And I was like, damn, we are the same age. And it is so fucking sad that she made a huge impact, right? She made a huge impact on the world and she will never know because she was fucking murdered. How rude. How rude. That's a shitty way to go out. But she made an impact for the better. It's just, why wasn't there anyone to protect her? Why wasn't anyone, like, willing to just, you know, be like, hey, yo, like, I didn't see you have a ride here. So, like, I could offer you a ride. A normal human. A good human. Like, why wasn't that there? The one person who offered her a ride was a sexual predator. He saw her vulnerability, her vulnerability, you understand what the fuck I'm trying to say. And he took that as a fucking weakness and he used it to his own advantage and possibly killed her. We need to know that man's name. So if anyone know that man, because this all happened in Tallahassee, Florida, okay? Y'all need to figure it out. Y'all need to get that man. Y'all need to lock him up. Throw away the key. That man need to go. And any other black sexual assaulter that you know who is at these fucking protests, glorifying that the fact glorifying the fact that they're at these protests and they think they're a fucking awesome human being for being there lock them up to because you don't need to be around no damn black kids no black women y'all don't need to be around nobody nobody because who fights for us you know one of the most heavily used quotes from malcolm x is how black women are the most disrespected women in america in the world and like it's baffling that we still use quotes from the 1960s and we relate to it now bitch i'm 1920 and was 19. we shouldn't be living in the reality that people in the 1960s 50s 40s was living in we shouldn't we shouldn't we shouldn't she deserved better on me. Like, how rude. How rude. Like, what? If it wasn't for most of these people dying, they would have never known how loved they could have been by the world. And that shit's ridiculous. So for any white person who ever stumbles upon this video, because I don't know if it's going to do numbers, I don't know if YouTube's going to shadow ban it because there's that, um, understand that you could do all the research in the world and to educate yourself, but this is an everyday thing. And when it wasn't a big protest, it was still an everyday thing. Imagine being a sexual assault victim of a cis-het man. 
and trying to, you know, make a change. But the system can work against you because you're a black woman. And you're at the bottom of the totem pole next to the black LGBT people because we're just at the bottom. It's annoying. And black people have been trying to tell you about our experiences the whole fucking time. And all these white people who are coming out doing this performative bullshit. Y'all are pathetic. Y'all gotta do better. Because we've been saying it. Like, let, let's not act like we wasn't saying it the whole time. We were saying it. We couldn't breathe. We couldn't breathe. And we've been saying that for more than 400 years. When we were enslaved when y'all made us slaves you made our ancestors slaves imagine what our ancestors went through huh this video is longer than the original imagine imagine white people imagine using all of your privilege of today oh, all of today and seeing black people Merciless, merciless, like mercilessly, merciless, more, more, you get the point. Like, mer, I'm, I'm done. Okay, just violently whipped to the point where our backs, our skin broke. The blood was just dripping down our backs. The blood just dripping down our legs because we were severely raped. Rape to the point that we probably couldn't even use the bathroom anymore. Rape to the point that we had to literally find other ways to pee, to walk. We probably, there is probably numbers of black women who were raped during the enslavement of Africans who just couldn't give birth anymore because of the rape. Y'all just thought, hey yo, there's a slave. I'm a predator. I'm going to rape her. And then after slavery ended, we thought it was going to be fine and dandy. And as if people didn't learn to assimilate to the fucking culture, black men assimilated to the rape. And they took it. And they ran with it. And they've been doing it ever since. So, all in all, Toyin. 19 year old queen deserved better and she didn't deserve to die like that because no sexual assault victim wants to get sexually assaulted again and to die by the sexual assaulter so we need to start looking out for each other regardless of our differences we just need to start looking out for each other because this is not it's not, it's not. Unity of a people happens when unity of everybody can happen. Unity of everyone, unity of black people will happen when cishet black men who are misogynistic realize their errors. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna start treating black women better. I'm gonna start treating black LGBT people better. I'm gonna start treating black trans people better i'm gonna start treating them as if we're just people because we're all people first we're black people first even if our differences are the first thing that a person can pinpoint our differences can be used for unity so yeah i hope i don't die for making this video but toyin deserve better got to do better we got to because i refuse to birth my children in this world that's already being torn apart because of fucking global warming and then racism i refuse just to be the victims of sexual assault because of their skin tone and they know that they could really get away with it because they're black i refuse they could get away with it because the sexual assault victim is black. I refuse. So that's that. We're done.